welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Thanks so much for joining us. As you know, I think that I'm Karen E. Osborne. I'm your host. I'm author of women's suspense mystery books, Getting It Right, Tangled Lies, Reckonings. And then this year, my first historical novel is coming out, True Grace. And I am excited about my guest today. She is such an awesome, beautiful woman. And she has today's publishing day for her. And just, so you're going to love her. You're just going to love her. So her <laughs> name is Elizabeth Sumner Waffler. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, Karen. I'm so happy to be here with you. Oh, I am just so delighted that you're here. So uh, she is the author of uh, four novels, right? Four novels. And her latest is A Cleft in the World, which launches today. Can we see this beautiful cover? You bet. Look, Look at how beautiful book baby number four. Isn't that, it's her fourth novel, and look how gorgeous that is. That is just beautiful. Here's what um, Kirkus Review said. An engaging, feel-good love story with plenty of plot twists. Now, does that not sound wonderful? That has everything that anybody would need. So, like me, and you know, we sort of lived this little parallel life. Because uh, in 2016, you published your first novel. 2017, I published my first. And then here we both are, four novels later, which is- You have pretty... me beat. <laughs> oh, we're both, we're both <laughs> just right there. Your, your, your four babies coming out and mine's not coming out until September. So we are right there. So how long, tell us a little bit about how long it took you to birth that first one. Birth is a good way to put it. Right. Um, I absolutely, um, I retired from teaching at 55 and I'm so grateful now um, that I am not in the classroom because of the way it is today. I don't know how these teachers do it. My hat is so off to them. Um, but I retired at 55 and I've been a quotidian bedtime reader since I was 12. And um, that's, that's easy because I always, you know, I have that niche that I read every day. And um, I decided to try my hand at it. I really thought I could. So um, I joined the Women's Fiction Writers Association and I, I really stumbled through In Robin's Nest, my first book. It was a romance. I thought it was women's fiction, but it was a romance. But, I, you know, I just I had no idea what I was doing. So I learned the craft um, by working with the gals that she write. I mean, excuse me, at the Women's Fiction Writers Association and taking all of the um, classes and webinars. And in within two years, I was the director of craft education for the organization. Mm, so wow. I worked really hard. <laughs> yes, and, yes. Isn't that so important that we study our craft all along, all along the way? But for the first novel, it's like everything, you know, but the same thing. I just, I spent so yeah. much time making mistakes and, writing bad drafts and, you know, learning my craft. Yeah. And thank goodness for so amazing people who read and gave honest feedback. Yes. And then being able to meet each other and have this sort of camaraderie is so important. Yeah. Such a, such a wonderful help. So tell us about the premise of A Cleft in the World. Okay, well, I thought that I would just sort of read the back of it um, because it really um, tells you so much. Um, mm -hmm. It's all right here. You know, it's all yeah. right here. So my heroine is French professor Georgie Bricker. Um, they call her Madame. And she, um, if you go back and look at my body of work, my second novel was Georgie Girl. And yeah. Georgie Girl was a coming of age story um, set uh, written for adults, but a coming of age story about a girl growing up on the campus of an all boys boarding school, which was actually my situation growing up, believe mm. it or not. 
So, and, and there are things in there that are um, true, but I will not admit to which ones are. <laughs> But this is Georgie when she's 45. And I've had so much good feedback about, um, uh, you know, having a, a middle-aged heroine. Um, they're rare these days in the most popular books anyway. Um, so Georgie is now, um, because of something that happened in Georgie Girl, she is an agoraphobic, but the type that she can leave her apartment and she can go um, about the campus and the small town environs, but she has not been away from that area, that school in 20 years. Wow. And she realizes the irony because she's working to shape her students into game changers and gate cr uh, crashers. You know, it's a woman's college. Um, while the, you know, with the agoraphobia, she's a prisoner of sorts. Um, she tells herself her life is fine, yet on her 45th birthday, she wishes for something extraordinary. Learning that her sanctuary is heavily in debt is not what Georgie had in mind when she made that wish, but that's the news she gets soon after making it. While she scrambles to rescue the school's French department, because, you know, language and arts are always the first thing to go. Yeah. Um, she... Um, her her first love when she was 14 in Georgie Girl shows up as a financial consultant to help the school. He's from Atlanta. And this, this takes place in Virginia. And they haven't seen each other in 34 years. Mm. And um, she, by day, she's faculty liaison to his committee. By night, she's moth to his porch light. I love that expression. I, I love, love that, that phrase. <laughs> when the college announces it will shutter, Georgie and fiercely independent Laurel Cross, the student who's closest to her heart, organize an alumni rally to save it. Between Georgie's rekindled love for Truman and becoming the and Laurel becoming the daughter she never had because she's never married, um, the extraordinary finally seems to have been granted. But the, when the pivotal rally occurs, it forces Georgie into a bigger, unsheltered world where she must confront her final fears or forfeit her chance for emotional freedom and a fulfilling new life. Ah, that sounds wonderful. And how clever to use the characters from an earlier book. I've heard people do that. Um, A.J. McCarthy, for example, she calls them spinoffs. But this is the maturing of. You know, not just a, taking a minor character and having them do something. That is so smart. Thank clever. you. I it's I so love fun that. because I know we're inside and out. Yeah. And now I know her as a 45-year-old. Yeah. She, she grew. <clears throat> she's, gr she's growing. She's growing. Yes. So yes. what do you love about her? What's, what's, what's the, oh, what's my the characteristics? Goodness. Everyone has pluses and minuses. So what frustrates you about her and what do you just love about her? Well, she's a wonderful person. Um, she still has the best friend that she had when she was 14 named Lacey. And um, although Lacey's in New York now and she's in um, still in Virginia and she's completely devoted to educating her students, um, the young women, it's her life, her raison d'etre. And she's, they love her. She's fun. She's witty and caring. Um, and she, still single at 45. She's lonely for love until Truman shows back up. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I guess I, I, I would be frustrated for her if she, if she, um, didn't try to do something about the agoraphobia. But she does, and she prevails. It's not always easy. She has some, there's some really dramatic, tough parts, but she prevails and overcomes it all. Did you have, um, did you have to do a lot of research on that? On I did. You know, I, I did do that. Um, yeah. That's did a good you, question. Did you get a chance to meet anybody that suffered from it? No, I just. Well. We'll get to meet somebody in the book. We'll get to meet Georgie. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. So 
Many um, of our viewers are authors. We have lots of other creators and we have, of course, amazing readers, but many are also trying to get that first book out or got a book to launch and you are in, this is pub day for you. This is, this is launch and you've done this before. So are there any little lessons that you could share about launching that would be uh, helpful? To our, I, our I had written some notes down. Great question. I'd written some notes down. Um, as you said before, study, study, study. And I had actually written that down too, Karen. Um, and I did that. Um, Mary Helen Sheriff has a great um, launch program. She does. She, have you read? She has a new one out where you can um, actually fill it out online. Oh. She's updated it. Very nice. She's cool that way. Mm -hmm. um, Debbie McComer has a good one. And um, people have... Um, a few people have compared my work with hers, so I downloaded hers, and it's great. Um, I have pounded the pavement um, to meet. We moved from Virginia to South Carolina um, two years ago, and so I really want to try to make um, a writer presence for myself here in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I met the authors of the local publications, um, the editors, excuse me, of the publications, and I wrote pieces for their magazines and had, you know, got those out there. I did three of those. Um, I, uh, it's funny. I, um, recently my husband travels a lot for business and I've always been blessed to be able to go with him and, you know, his part of the trip is free and then mine yeah. is on points usually. And <laughs> so I love to go. And um, this past week, for example, we were in Maine mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, this little Southern girl in, in Maine, um, but we've been there several times before, but I went around, uh, researched the, the uh, independent bookstores that they have there in Maine, darling little shops, the cutest shops. And I went in there, you know, I dolled up and went in there and I had my um, bookmarks that I could give away. I did do bookmarks, authors, mm -hmm. if you're promoting, do a bookmark with your launch date on it with a um a quote on the back. And where and does I, your QR code take them? I am so cool. I learned how to do a, a QR code. Yeah. It takes them to my website, to a link to my website. Perfect. So I've been handing these out like mad. And um, there's some really funny stories from the gals at She Writes Press, the other authors. They will do things like um, take their bookmarks and go down the the rows in bookstores and stick them in other books. <laughs> I haven't done that yet, but I might do that. But I gave these out to anybody that I spoke with on the trip um, who I asked, you know, I look for sophisticated, smart looking women, uh, women, older women particularly, because that's who I think will enjoy my work the most. And I'd ask them if they're a writer. And if they say, well, sometimes I'm like, well, good for you. You should read more. But if they say, oh, I read all the time. Here's your bookmark. Here's my launch date. And um, so that's really great. And um, I spoke, I found four bookstores in Maine in different, different parts. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> four bookstores, um, owners who are going to be carrying my book. Wow. So Please excuse me. That's um, awesome. I know. I was so excited. So they were very nice. And um, they were able, because I'm with um, She Writes Press this time, they were able to find me immediately on um, the publisher, the site where you go to order books for your store. And they were able to find it. And then I was said, you know, and I got a really great Kirkus review for this. And they were like, wow. And then when they pulled it up, they saw the review yeah. your, your uh, website is lovely it's it's yeah. very it's it's it feels very intimate your love oh. your website it just has this you know this kind of welcome welcome thank you, know? you. yeah it's, it doesn't feel it's very corporate. homespun it's not you know yeah, it's not but as it's sophisticated warm. as 
Oh, but it feels thanks. very warm and genuine. I I love I love your website. I think it's oh. really it's really well done. And I'm going to take a page out of your book. Thank you so much because I'm going to take my bookmarks. I'm going to be in Orlando and I'm going to be in Seattle. And I am taking my bookmarks and going to the local stores and handing them out. You do it, girl. That's fantastic. And yeah, you know, but you're, you know, when you put your your face in front of people and you talk to people and are genuine with people, I think that gets you the results. Yes, it's true. I really do. Um, let's see what else. So, so local publications. Okay. Um, I'm doing um a book launch at the one of the largest independent bookstores in the country called M. Judson Booksellers. They're amazing. Forbes magazine even touted them, and they are um giving me a book launch this week for um a cleft in the world. Wow, so where are they located? About that. Where are they located? They're in downtown Greenville, South Carolina, where I live. That is so awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. And it's an all, all women run um, operation. Well, that's even more impressive. <laughs> that sounds so good. That's a reader. You know, you, you have your, your books are so interesting and, and you certainly had an interesting life uh, as a teacher. As, and I'm um, sure there's a whole lot of stories there, but as a reader, is there any book that had like a really big impact on either who you are or oh. how you write? Oh, I, I'm looking at my notes here, Karen, that, I, that you were so nice to send me. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I think I'd rather name authors if that's okay, because of I've course. read all their books. Yeah. Um, so um, the writers who have probably inspired me the most with their strong protagonists um, and their heart and their tenderness that shows up in their stories are Anna Quindlin. Mm. Um, I've been reading her for 20 years. Um, more recently, Kristen Hanna. I love her. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Jacqueline Michard and um, um, I think I said them all. Yeah, that, that's the ones I wrote down, but yeah, um, yeah, they no, are wonderful. That's, well, that's everything impressive. they do is wonderful. Oh, Erica Bauermeister. Oh, I don't know her. Oh, um, I was going to tell you about her when I when we were talking about um, books you recommend. Books. Uh, well, or or um, a launch, how to to get blurbs for your book. I don't think you asked me about that, but um, it never hurts to ask people because I did a big reach and I asked Jacqueline Michard, Erica Bauermeister. Um, she's written, she has a huge body of work and um, was recently a Reese pick for the scent keeper that I was going to talk about. Um and she said yes. And another one of the other ones turned me down. She said she was writing a book and didn't do blurbs while she was writing. And Jacqueline Michard, who was the first, um, she was the first one to be on Oprah's book club uh, back in the, what was it, 90s? Um, she was the on the inaugural um, Oprah book club show. And she said, of course, I will do this and call me Jackie. So, you know, you You're just right. take a chance. You, you that's, just that's, do it. That's great advice in general, in general. Yeah. So do you have any book recommendations for us? One or two oh, books that you'd like us um, to. I want to talk up. about Erica's new book. Well, no, actually, she has no two persons, which I've not read yet. It just came out last week. Um, and um but the one that just slayed me is called the scent keeper S C E N T mm. the scent keeper. And it's a story about a reclusive man that we don't know yet why he's there, but he's on this private Island with his young daughter who he has raised. And she's still only about eight or nine in, in the beginning. And it is amazing. But what I love the most about Erica is her prose. It mm. is grossly gorgeous prose. And mm. um, in The Scent Keeper, 
it, it's a book about scent, how this little girl is able to, as an adult, make a career out of um, scents, um, using scents to market, but it's much more than that. Um, but Erica um, writes about that scent of smell in so many of her books. And she writes a series, there are two books about a, um, uh, a chef who teaches a cooking school at night and you go into, you, you know, her life. And then you go into the, the backstories of all these characters who show up at the cooking school, mm -hmm. um, the lost art of mixing. And uh, I'm looking at it on my bookshelf over there. Um, oh, the, the school of essential ingredients. And those are fabulous. And then, um, I, I was just going to read you, this is, this, I, I like to put out on my Instagram, I like to put writer tips, add a writer tip or two per week. Okay, so one tip, because we're running out of time. Okay, <laughs> um, this is, I just wrote this about Erica Bauermeister, um, and used it as a writer's tip. So she says, I write about things we don't pay attention to, our sense of smell, the food we cook, the house we live in, the way our filters affect our perspective of the world. I write about these quiet spaces between words huh, and all that goes in them. Mm, I mean, how gorgeous. Beautiful. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Well, this has been such a lovely conversation. I am so glad that we reconnected and have a chance to talk. If our audience, and I know they do, they want to buy your book, they want to read your books, they want to be in touch with you and follow you, how can they do that? They can follow me on Instagram. Um, it's Elizabeth Sumner, S-U-M-N-E-R, Waffler, W-A-F-L-E-R. I also have a Facebook author account, um, author Elizabeth Sumner Waffler, but I don't have a lot of traction there. And I'm hearing that from other people too. Yeah, I don't get but a lot most... of traction on, on Amazon. I do get it on Facebook, on my author Facebook page. Um, oh, good. But, and then please, you, and how do they find your beautiful, beautiful website? Um, it's ElizabethSumnerWaffler.com. There you are. So there I you hope are. you will follow Elizabeth. You'll follow her on Instagram. You'll follow, her, you'll uh, like her, her and subscribe to her website that you will buy her book and send her a note and said, I was so excited meeting you on what oh, are you reading? What that. are you writing? We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank everybody. you so much, Karen. My pleasure. It was my pleasure. Bye, everybody.